Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to the channel where we talk about music licensing, music production, and music business. If you love any of the previously mentioned, be sure to subscribe so we can stay ah, so you can stay up to date on all the latest content and hit that bell icon so you know exactly when that new content drops. Shout out to everybody in the stream. What's good? It's another live q a slash music is my business podcast there's also a five month old screaming at the top of his lungs in the studio so you guys may hear that but that's okay because he's related to me so dj ricky ricky ono what's good welcome to the stream cigar productions good afternoon clint what's good shame is from uk i see you el tempo beats from paris i see you man hope all is well um yeah so the week has been pretty cool so far it's hump day right so i'm not too mad been kind of busy non-stop 9 dm beats i see you raymond what's good from atlanta patty p from canada what's up burnt cds from texas malvin minor welcome back to the stream kim durr one of our moderators is in the building what's good the family's good hoping all is well with you and everybody else as well um Trey Sean, what's good? Good morning, good morning. So today I'm excited because I have another guest. Y'all know how we get down. Um, this guest, we're gonna be talking about some some really cool tech technology that I, I feel like comes in handy. I know it's come in handy for me um, a couple times. Um, just some some AI that just does some super dope things. So I have the founder of Audio Shake um ai and it's pretty much artificial intelligence it takes a wave file a single wave file and it splits your music up into stems and it sounds legit as if you know you went into a session and you know asked for acapella asked for instrumental so without <laughs> lw says can't have a baby in the back and not show it he's he's far away do do y'all want to see the baby drop drop a baby emoji if you guys want to see the baby I like I was I was gonna move on with the show, but it sounds like the people want to see the baby. All right, I'll show you guys the baby, and then and then we'll we'll chop it up with Jessica. What's up, dude? Say hi. Take over. <laughs> or eat the mic, whichever one. Okay, say bye now. Look at, look that way. Look. Okay, he just he just wants to eat the mic. All right, bye, buddy. So that's uh. That's our second son. He's, he's running things over here. All right, y'all. So let's dig into it. Without further ado, Jessica Powell, founder of Audio Shake. Jessica, how are you today? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks for being here and, and taking out the time. And thank you for allowing my son to do his little mini intro. Uh, so tell the people about yourself, you know, who you are, what you do, and then we can kind of get into how you how you i guess kind of entered this path of, of creating what's known as audio shake yeah sure um so i'm jessica um i've worked between music and tech pretty much my whole career i actually started off in music in czak in paris which is one of the like parent rights organizations to like say a bmi or an ascap mm -hmm. um and then not because at 22 i had some extraordinary passion for copyright uh but it was the first job I could get, um, but it was a huge education in, I think, music and uh, authors' rights and stuff. Um, and then I moved into tech and I was at Google for a really, really long time and worked across products like YouTube and um, all kinds of different content or search products. Yeah. And um, and then I, one of my stints at Google, I was running one of our divisions in Asia Pacific based in Tokyo. So I did a ton of karaoke, like a ton of karaoke, yeah. um, in Japan, uh, along with the person who'd eventually be my co-founder. And the thing that we were both always just like, wow, karaoke is amazing and also sucks. Like mm -hmm. the catalog is really limited. We wanted to do old punk and old hip hop and you mm -hmm. couldn't do any of that. So you're just doing constantly doing Oasis and like brown eyed girl and gin and juice. Like it was every <laughs> karaoke place we went and those are like the standards. Um, and we were like, wow, what if you could just find a way to separate the vocals from every song so that you could do karaoke to all the songs in the world? Right. And that kind of sat in our heads for a long time. And then when we both left our jobs, we came back to that idea. And this time we came back to it with like, well, wait, if you could separate the vocals, why couldn't you separate everything and turn everything into like a Jay Dilla album? 
And then we were like, oh, and if you could do Jay Dilla, what else could you do once you found a way to separate music that could create entirely new music experiences that would allow people to create and interact with music, even people who don't, who might be intimidated by like a DAW or by an instrument. Yeah. And so that was how Audio Shake was born. Wow. That's dope. And and I feel like, it, like you said, I mean, for someone who, I don't know, I, like me personally, just outside of the fact that I'm a producer, sometimes, I, like I love vocal arrangements and harmonies and things like that. Um, so sometimes, like, I would love to hear, like, what does this song sound like without any music, just acapella, so I can, like, hear what's going on vocally. And, you know, it's... Uh, for a regular person, that's a complicated process to even figure out how to do, or you can't even do it because you don't have the Pro Tools session from the original session. So being able to have a, a, a user-friendly interface to easily be able to do that in like a matter of seconds, I think is really powerful. Um, so that that's cool. So I guess my <laughs> my first question is, so when you're doing karaoke, because I've never done it personally, surprisingly, but... So can you like bring your own music and like, you know, create your own stems and then upload it to, to whatever and just perform it? Or well, so with audio shake, so karaoke generally, right? Like if you're, whether you're doing in the US or Japan or wherever, mm -hmm. there's a licensed catalog of music. It's sort of the same catalog everywhere. Okay. Um, and it's just like the hits and the hits as determined by the karaoke companies and the labels, right? Um, so you get kind of the tried and true classics and probably some frontline stuff as well that's more recent. Um, but yeah, you don't get like the full breadth of the songs that say you grew up with or that you wanna sing. Um, and they're re-records. So on top of that, the original recordings, they are um, often pretty bad, <laughs> like yeah. takes the original. Um, and so that's why we're like, oh, it'd be really cool to be able to separate. Um, but with Audio Shake, we don't get, we don't, we don't build a karaoke catalog or anything like that. We are the tool that producers or labels or artists use to be able to do. Like, it can be because of, like you said, people come to us. Particularly, I would say, you know, contemporary content. Um, it's because they like there's missing project files or doc compatibility issues. Um, someone's hard drive crashes. So they're coming to get the stems that then they use to either do a remix or for they need an instrumental for sync licensing. That's a really big use case. Yeah. Uh, or they want to, um, like on the label side, a lot of times they want, they need stems to be able to create the Dolby Atmos mix. Yeah. Um, those are some of the biggest use cases, but um, we're working with some partners on some eventual karaoke stuff too. That's that's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, we love sync licensing over over here. And I feel like that being able to do that is huge because, you know, a lot of times I feel like independent artists, you know, they're they're being creative and they're creating their music and, and their albums with just, you know, just being creative. And, and to put that out as a project not necessarily thinking of sync as an opportunity moving forward. So when an opportunity does come and then, you know, the the sync licensing company or the publishers like, "Hey, we actually need an an instrumental or, you know, some type of alternative version," you know, it may be harder to get in touch with the engineer or or to, like you said, to pull those original session files or the file got corrupted. <laughs> So that that's pretty cool. Um, is that is that how you see that being used a lot of times? Is just from professionals just kind of needing to recover certain things. Yeah, I mean, I think what you described is exactly what happens on the indie artist side. So we have a platform called Audio Shake Indie. Um, the number one driver of people putting them on there is probably sync licensing, uh, also remixes, okay. <laughs> and it's it's usually because it, it, you have. Uh, probably a small bucket of people where they recorded the song in the eighties or the nineties and it was their youth passion project and they never like, and this is back, sometimes it's even analog stuff, right? Where yeah. it's on tape and then they've converted to digital, but that then there's a whole other step of like how you get the stems from that. And um, so we do have people that come to us for that almost for nostalgia type purposes, but the majority yeah. are coming to us because um, they can't get in touch with the producer, uh, or the, yeah, the files are corrupted um, and they need to, and I think one thing that's changed, which you've probably a lot of your 
uh, the people listening in also know is that I think when Sync first started, when it was really small and it was this kind of growing part of the industry that people weren't paying that much attention to, I think the bar was a lot lower in terms of file delivery. You know, like you could deliver a whole mix and maybe that would be fine. And then if the music editor needed to make edits in the editing room, they might then get in touch with you or your label or whoever, you know, was representing you. Yeah. But now really having an instrumental, I think a lot of sync agents won't even look at your your song, your recording, if you don't have the instrumental as well, because they know they can't land that if it's because it sounds so standard as part of delivery. So we have a lot of people that have come to us um, just because they they were sort of caught up in that transition of they recorded in say pre 2020, 2017 era before STEM delivery was part of a lot of contracts. And right. so they just don't have them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's crazy. Um, but yeah, it, like you said, it, it's definitely become a standard. It's just like, if you have a full song, bare minimum, you need that song and an instrumental. Um, so that's, that's crucial. So you mentioned, you mentioned audio shake has like audio shake indie and then, the other side of it is that where you just kind of focus more so on like the like the major labels or corporations and things like that. Yeah, so we have two platforms. We have a platform that the labels and publishers and distributors use. Okay. Um, and then we we got a lot of incoming over email from indie artists and producers who wanted to be able to use it, and we it was just a lot of work on email to try and like it just it's really important to us like. I don't ever want someone to buy something from us and not be happy with the quality and not be excited about it. So I always want to make sure, make sure people can listen to what they're buying before. Yeah. So if you, if your listeners go to indie.audioshake.ai, you can upload the song, you pick your stems, it returns samples of the stems back to you and you can decide if you like it first. And that was really important to us, but that was actually really hard to do over email because like, Clint would send me a song, I would create the stems for it, and then I'd, then I'd throw them into a DAW where then I'd chop it to like 45 seconds or something. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's like it was just very involved. And then on top, and then if you want to give indie artists better pricing and the amount of human work that was having to go into that made it hard. So we created this self-serve platform um, for indie content. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, how does it do it? Like, I don't, I'm always curious, like, how this stuff works, like, just in the back end so is it just like i don't know i'm i don't know like is it like a set of code that does this stuff and splits it because it's it sounds good and, and we'll we'll do a demo for you guys so you can kind of hear like what something sounds like you know chopped in, in the stems using audio shake but like how does all of it work like can you make it make sense <laughs> it's, it's a lot yeah i basically sit at my computer 24 hours a day and when you upload the file it comes to me and okay. then I sit there and I just really, really fast, like EQ the song. Oh that's a joke. Or that, I attempted a joke. <laughs> I was just like, okay. yo, she, she's insane. She's a beast. Yeah. When I, when, I, when I first started working at Google, I remember I had relatives that were like, how does it work? Like, are there people there that answer the question? <laughs> and I was like, yes, that's exactly what I do. Um, so, yeah. No, uh, we train. So I actually think that the easiest way to think about um, stem separation with AI is sort of similar to something that probably all of your listeners have on their phone. It's okay. technically different, conceptually similar, which is you probably have a Photos app like Google Photos or Apple Photos on your phone. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever gone and typed like tree into your Photos app, it will most likely return to you photos that you've taken of trees. Right. And at no point do you ever tell Google or Apple, like, this is a photo of a tree. But their AIs have trained on thousands of images of trees that were labeled as trees, like things that they 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 knew for certain were trees. Mm -hmm. And then that then allowed them to develop a concept or a model of what a tree is that mm -hmm. they can then go find in your photos, even though you never told them it was a tree. So in a similar sense, we train on thousands of real stems um, that then teach our AI, like this is what a vocal is, this is what a drum is, um, that then allows us to take a song that we've never seen before and split the stems out from that. Though it, it's like interesting, I mean, this gets into kind of music nerd territory, but you guys are all music nerds. Yeah. But like there's interesting questions, you know, around um, like, what do you do with a tonal 808? Is that a drum or is it a bass? Yeah. Right? So like we, they're, they're, or synth, like is, since synth can be so many different things, how do you separate a synth? How do you learn what a synth is? Do you just call a bass synth bass? 
you know. Um, yeah. Our general approach is we separate according to what's the most approximate sound. So um, like a tonal 808, we actually made a bass. Um, but uh, so there's there's sort of interesting things around that that would probably deviate from normal stems in that sense, um, where we're separating what this what's the sonic quality similarity. Got you. That's that's super interesting. Producer producer Kale said that's crazy for real for real. Yeah, it is. Um, that's I mean technology is amazing. And if for the new people joining the stream, we're talking to Jessica Powell from Audio Shake, one of the founders from Audio Shake. Um, it's a, a software that creates stems from you know a single wave file. Um, so you can create instrumentals, acapellas, and and other types of stems. So if you have questions, definitely drop them in the chat. Um, and, and we'll we'll try and answer them. So when you, you talk about uploading a, a, a WAV file, right? Like how many types of stems does Audio Shake provide? Is it just the instrumental? Is it just the acapella? Like what, what all stems do you guys provide? Uh, vocals, drums, bass, guitar, piano, other, and then we have more coming soon too. Okay, wow. That's already a lot because, you know, some of the like the earlier technologies or, you know, services, it would be very, very basic. You know, you can get an instrumental, you can get an acapella. And then once you get into the other stuff, it's, it starts to kind of get a little bit of weird, like weird artifact sounds to it. But um, so C Noise 83 has a question. He says, so only send WAV files and no MP3s. Are they able to upload MP3s and do the same? Oh, I love this question. OK, so. When you're doing any kind of sound processing, whether you are doing it with Audio Shake or I guess one of our competitors that you should use Audio Shake, um, if you have the WAV file, it's always better if you use WAV just because when you're starting with lossless audio, when, and this is not some sort of audio snob, like I personally cannot hear the difference between an MP3 and like a WAV file. I'm sure some of you can, I cannot. Yeah. Um, but it's so it's not that kind of thing. It's it's literally when you're taking something that is compressed and passing it through the separation, you're more likely to have artifacts. Mm -hmm. So we we 100 percent have customers, not just on the indie artist side, but through to like labels and very big time producers that strictly work with MP3s. Okay. Um, but if you ever have the choice, uh, start with high res. Um, and again, probably everyone on this call knows this, but I'll say it anyway. If all you have is an MP3, there is no win for you in converting it to a wave and then uploading it because you started with lossless. So, yeah. uh, sorry, you started with compressed. So, um, but yes, anything is fine. Like, well, we welcome all file formats. Nice. That's that's convenient. Um, a producer name too brings up a good point, and this will probably. I don't know, this would probably be more of a like a legal issue, but they said in the wrong hands, a lot of music can get stolen quote unquote mm -hmm. so like is that yeah. is that something you all had to combat like as a technology like this is that something that you guys kind of have to deal with um or is it just kind of you know we just provide the service <laughs> and then we yeah. hope that people are just responsible with what they use it for yeah no i think that's um it's sort of a question I, that i feel like i wrestle with personally every day um so the the way we looked at it, right, as musicians and creators ourselves, we looked at it in two ways, right? We, we thought, first of all, they're going to be artists, more likely older artists, like people who didn't grow up with YouTube and TikTok, who have the view that they put their work into the world this way, and that's how they want people to experience it. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to be respectful of that. Yeah. All the while, ourselves, you know, like I... Like some of the most transformative music for me personally, where you know, was like Jay Dilla and and DJ Shadow and and the like the Gray album and all of these things that never would have happened if copyright was fully respected, right? And and I think True. music is a conversation and an evolution and people essentially riffing off of each other over the years. Yeah. But I wanted to be respectful of the fact that well, I just didn't want Prince to like come haunt me in my bedroom at <laughs> Because Prince would probably hate AI stem separation. Probably. Um, but the first part was we wanted to make sure that artists who didn't want this, that even though it's still going to happen and that people are going to do it, because everyone else that does source separation, every other technology that's out there, there is no content blocking at all. Yeah. Um, we just didn't want to be the ones who did that. 
And so that was sort of the philosophical starting point. And then the second part was, I think that remix culture really sucks um, for everyone. Like I love remixes. So like, and I think the industry's view of remixes has changed dramatically over the past five years. I think they used to think it cannibalized attention to the original song. Now they realize it's the cycle of the song and, and helps increase relevance. Yep. But the problem with remixes is that you're the remixer, you ripped some stems, you didn't get them legally or whatever. And so you then upload your mix to SoundCloud, you've done BPM shift or whatever to get around the content recognition software, which means then the original artist, that content's never detected, the original artist isn't paid. And then you as a remixer aren't paid because you never had permission to do it. Meanwhile, like remixing is a whole art, like you should be paid. And then on top of that, so then the best outcome is that your remix goes viral and then the label swoops in to claim it. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they offer you to let you do another mix on spec. Like it's all all kinds of screwed up, right? And the final part is that like all the royalty free sampling and everything are all super cool too, right? Like that's opened up a whole world, but it's also really like, that's also really complicated on the copyright side too, because someone like licenses something and then they register it first as copyrighted, like on YouTube or whatever. And then it blocks all these other people from using that same sample. They got royalty free. So all that complication is to say that what we did, which is super annoying for a lot of producers and remixers. And I apologize is that we, um, on our audio shake indie site, um, we content block major label content. Um, so we wanted to have something where indie artists and indie producers could easily get their stems. Um, and we'd love to find ways to open it up. Um, because again, we actually love remixes and we love people like reinvention and everything that that people do in that space. Mm -hmm. Um, but we wanted to start more cautiously just out of respect for all the artists and producers and the fact that they don't get paid for this stuff when people doing it. And so that was my very long, complicated answer. But we, we ask ourselves that every day because every other technology out there, even though the separation isn't as good, you can separate everything. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, that's, that's good. And it, yeah, it's just with technology, you know, you just always have this, this space of, you know, everyone trying to figure out, okay, how do we monetize all of this and make it make sense? And how do we properly, properly compensate people? It's like you enter a space to where there's no rules yet. So it's like everybody's trying to figure stuff out. Um, and then it goes for years of it never being figured out. Kind of like streaming royalties, like, you know, I think they're still figuring that out um, to get it to where it's, it's fair. Um, but yeah, yes. I guess it comes with the territory, you know? Yeah, I think we'll get to a better place because what's also cool about stem separation is that you could eventually use that as a way to detect remixes. Like uh, you, I yeah. think you actually get pretty far in, if you took like say the top 10% of remixes on SoundCloud mm-hmm. <clears throat> and you source separated them, you could match them up to original stems and figure out which ones are remixes and which ones are original content. Um, and that would help a little bit with identification. You could yeah. also use it, I think, ultimately to help with this problem that I think is super real in the producer community around beats and songs getting taken down mm-hmm. just because you're not the first one to use that free sam- the, the royalty free sample. Yeah. Again, you could use you'd be able to match up and realize this is actually a royalty free sample. People should be able to use it. This song should not be taken down. Um, so I, I think we're going to get to them. And I do think eventually there will be frameworks where the remixers are also getting paid for yeah the remixes they've done, which I think they should be. Um, and I, I think we're going to be in a better place. I just think we're to, we're not there yep. entirely yet. Just working through it. You know, the, the idea came to mind, like, have, have you all ever been in a situation where like audio shake was used like in a, I don't know, in, in a, in like of a, what do you call it? Like, a, I can't, it just, I literally just had this word in my, in my brain. Like it, I don't know, an investigation of like something like you mentioned, like if they just took the split the stems and was like, let's figure out like if you actually use something yeah. from copyrighted material. Yeah. Yes. Really? So, That's I, pretty. It's cool. And it bums me out at the same time. Right. Really? Like, like, there's. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that it's just like the 
the what is that a producer name too who asked the question about music in the wrong hands you can see my existential dilemma on all this like people yeah. right is that on one hand i'm like i love remixes on the other hand i'm like artists and remixers should be paid yeah it's the same thing on the copyright side right we've definitely had um you know i'll, I'll give you two examples we had a uh, I found about them after the fact, but um, okay. we had a publisher that normally is using our tool for uh, sync licensing, so creating okay. instrumentals. And um, they had a case where they felt that this West African uh, group that they represented from the 60s, um, that their music had been uh, used by a contemporary hip hop act. Okay. And they separated the contemporary song and put it up against the stems from the, that they were able to create that hadn't existed before from the sixties act. Um, and anyway, they were that, that was like, that was an example of something. Um, mm. and it was pretty striking. I mean, a lot of times I think a lot of these cases, uh, like blurred lines, that kind of stuff, yeah. that just, stuff, that stuff just bums me out generally. Right. Cause yeah. I just think it's sort of near to how art's created, but, um, you definitely have cases where you're like, hmm, yep, that seems pretty similar, <laughs> you yeah. know? So, um, yeah, I've heard a, a couple of cases of that being used um, as as part of kind of the the arguments or this, or even on the other side, trying to, um, uh, I remember there was a case where a, a song was about to go out and whoever at the label internally that handles copyright or whatever it would be, um, was concerned about the baseline that was used okay. and felt that it was too similar to something iconic. Yeah. And th so they used audio shake to separate out the bass. They summed up the other stems and then created a new baseline. Nice. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, 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 it's so interesting. Cause it's like audio shake, the audio investigation software as well. So it's, it's pretty cool. Oh, well, do you ask me about the police? The police come all the time too. Oh They're really? Like, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had a couple of countries like police forces come, because uh, they want to be able to use it to separate. You know, like if you hear someone confessing to a murder in a room, yeah. and there's yeah. a lot of other noise, and they want to separate that out. Um, and you're just kind of like, ah, like you know, I don't know. I'm just trying to separate music, guys. Yeah. Um, we don't. We don't do any of that stuff. Um, there's just a, also a very simple practical reason, which is uh any of those kinds of government things there's just crazy compliance and yeah. uh different rules and stuff so we don't we don't actually get into any of that but we've definitely had a lot of incoming from people wanting to use it for that yeah that's interesting also also note to all of my producers in here and engineers mostly i guess engineer if you produce and engineer but mostly like mixing engineers and audio engineers like that is a whole lane as well that you can you can make income from like they'll pay you to do forensics on audio. Um, I know a buddy of mine, he's done some some cases and, you know, obviously you got to do NDAs and all that stuff. But, yeah, they'll send him a piece of audio and it's his job to clean up that audio, take out noise, you know, do whatever he has to do to try and pretty much hear either like a confession or just some some audio proof of something that's being used in the case so it's, it's really interesting um you know which <laughs> how music and, and audio and the skills that you have in this field can translate into like some other deeper stuff <laughs> in, in other industries yeah. i was just gonna say if this is useful to people um yeah forensic audio if, is, is really lucrative if yeah. people are looking for a, I think there's a ton of training and compliance you have to go through because the files you're working with are confidential and, and that sort of thing. But um, if you can do spectral editing, um, which is super laborious, um, but yeah, noise removal, uh, background removal, um, it's very, very, very lucrative um, for sure. Oh, and I just saw someone popped up in the chat. That's one of our customers, uh, producer named Billy Bad News. Hey, Billy. What's up, Billy? Uh, that's awesome. So we got a few questions. Let's see. We got one from Nathaniel James. He says, can it separate lead vocals from background vocals and separate background vocals into separate parts? It's a good question. Yeah. So that is super hard. Um, we've been working on it for about a year. Uh, and I actually got through our most recent results on Friday. And I was pretty stoked because we did... Um, 
Ain't No Mountain, just to just to give it a run. Um, it's pretty great. Uh, so you can hear um, uh, you can hear the man's. Well, in this case, it was more gay, but you can hear the man's voice and the female voice completely separate wow. um, without artifacts, which is pretty awesome. It's not live on the platform yet. Okay. We still have a lot of stuff to still do, okay. but um, I hope to have it there next year. That said, um, we've already worked on a number of projects with um, multivocal or polyphonal, polyphonic vocal removal. So we did, um, actually, this is kind of fun music trivia. So I don't know how many people on the call. This is probably, this is before all of our time. I'm pretty sure. Um, be like our grandparents maybe, but there was a group in the U S called, um, buddy was an artist, buddy Holly and his band was called the crickets. So buddy Holly and the crickets, this is like from the fifties. Um, and they were like very, very famous for their time. And they recorded this album in like two takes in New Mexico. And then they go on tour. And while they're on tour, the producer is like, you know what this record needs is a barbershop quartet. So for people, maybe for whom English isn't their first language, a barbershop quartet is essentially a bunch of men singing a cappella. Mm-hmm. So the original record is like rockabilly. And then they've got this barbershop quartet in the back. Mm-hmm. And when Buddy and the band returned from their tour, they were really upset because they were like, this is not how we sound. But they had to live with it. I mean, this was a monotrack recording from the 50s. Uh, and the drummer is still living. He's the only one who's still living. And wow. he came to us. He found us somehow. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, and he, along with the record label, worked on a project. It hasn't come out yet, but to remove the barbershop quartet. So to release the album like it was originally intended. So wow. we've done that. And we and with indie artists, too. Um, if you look on our Instagram, which is uh, the handles below my screen here. Uh, we have a couple of um, case studies where we worked on um, uh, some remastering or mixing projects where the artist needed to have polyphonic, like they need to have multivocal separation. So mm-hmm. um, we, we've done that as well. That You have to email us for that. It's like a different process. Gotcha. But we can, if you have a project where you need it, we can do it. Wow. That's next level. I love it. Um, <clears throat> let's see. We got a couple other ones. Um, Seamus says, curious to know if stems slash instruments would go back together and sound like original. So I guess if you split them using audio shake and then put them back in the session, would it sound like the original? Yeah. I mean, it, it should, that it should sound up to the, to the original, um, for sure. Uh, you know, I mean, what's interesting too is, um, you're essentially getting the wet stems, right? So if there's ducking on the track, there's going to be ducking in the stem. Um, or if there's reverb, you're going to have reverb. So yeah, it should all sum up to the full mix. Nice. Um, then we had another one. Um, Trey Sean, is the RX-10 AI doing the same thing to rebalance? I'm not sure what, the, what yeah. RX-10 is. Uh, I think it's the isotope stuff. Um, oh, okay. okay. Uh, yeah. So um, yes, I would humbly put forth that you should use audio shake nice use <laughs> just use audio shake um, I mean, you've heard some yeah, of the things we, they've done yeah we um so there was sony actually ran a contest last year called the demixing challenge okay um to find the best separation technology so we won that and we beat facebook and TikTok and um all the other technologies out there so Nice. Uh, we usually outperform that stuff. Love it. Though, you know, I still have a lot of cool stuff you can do with it too. So, you know, I like yeah. isotope too. Indeed, indeed. All right. So I'm going to show them a demo because I think it's, I think it's dope. Um, so let's see, let's see how this, how this audio shake works. If you're riding, I know that you're vibing. Tell me if you're riding. I know that you're vibing. Tell me if you're riding. I know that you're vibing. Nice. So yeah, so you had a lot, like a, a bunch of different options there. Yeah, and we could separate. So that's like- Oops, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was yeah, I was just going back to the. So it let so you upload the track and then you're able to select the stem types 
and then it goes and, and processes everything and you kind of have this I, I love the fact that you can mute and like solo each stems like right there on the platform that's dope yeah um we always just want to make sure that you like the quality before asking you to pay so we we wanted to create samples um that's actually a good case that song if you saw that probably was hard to see that was actually an mp3 so that's one of um diplo and major label uh, major lasers producers uh jack stone uh had like a classic i'm sure a lot of people on the call have had this problem right which is just you're juggling so many files and you're creating so many projects most of them will never necessarily come to anything and so are you really going to sit there and spend a half an hour bouncing your stems you know right and then you lose them because you forget to do it and that's it. So that's what happened. Like he lost some project files uh, and came to us and uploaded that. And it was for, um, yeah, a remix project he's working on. Nice. Yeah. That I mean, honestly, that that seems a lot quicker than shuffling through archives and drives of old sessions. Like I've been there before in like sync situations and it they it was like quick turnaround, like a couple hours. And I was like hustling, trying to find a session, number one. And then number two, trying to make sure everything sounded exactly how it sounded according to the version that they already had. So something like this can be super powerful in, in a situation like that. Um, thanks, LW, for dropping that that link in the in the chat. Um, Hangmaster with the question says, do you know how long I've been waiting to be able to pull vocals and sounds out of tracks without tweaking the sample for a week? So Audio Shake has just saved your life. So shout out to, to Audio Shake. Um. Well, yeah, one, one thought that that, um, first of all, if you do go to Audio Shake, I will tell you all, um, so it's indie.audioshake.ai. You can get there from our main site, audioshake.ai, but okay. Indie will take you directly to Indie. Um, nice. Hit the subscribe button. It's way cheaper than if you buy it a la carte. Um, uh, and also, I don't I think I can put a chat in, right? Or can I? I think you can. Uh, there should be a like something on the right-hand side where you can open up the chat. Oh, it says I can do it privately. Well, I'll just oh, okay. okay. Find a way to do it, but otherwise, um, uh, if you do uh, take fifty, so T A K E five O, um, it'll give you fifty percent off your first uh, order too. So, Dude. but hit subscribe; it's way cheaper. Um, the the other thing that's kind of cool that that you made me think of um, is that uh, one of the things that we didn't anticipate and then made sense to us once it was launched and we saw how people were using it uh -huh. was we definitely have producers and musicians who are collaborating with each other just to use it as a kind of creative hack. Yeah. Like they're sending files back and forth and they just want to hear how something sounds without taking all this time to bounce the stems or to do it. And so they'll just use it as like a way to just almost share. Sometimes people even share an account uh -huh. and that they, they, they don't have to, download stuff, upload it into a DAW. They can yeah. and they use it sort of like creative inspiration. I think Absolutely. longer term what we'd like to be able to do uh, because we have an API is integrate in some of the tools people are already using mm -hmm. so that they can separate. Again, not it's not even for final product. They can just separate and you can just be like, isolate those, everything but the drums, like mute the drums yeah. and be like, okay, what this needs is like new drums, you know? Yep, yep that that would definitely come in handy you know as a producer sometimes we're working with artists and you know you're trying to sometimes it, it's a sometimes you're doing revisions and they're like yeah we don't like like the way something sounds or the drums was like okay well, let's see what it sounds like mute the drums and then maybe you know i don't know you can play something live over it and kind of just test it out um to see what that sounds like or take the guitar out see if that changes the vibe so yeah that's that's a really great idea to be able to use it in in a, a collaborative way like that um yeah i love it let's see if we have, anybody else has any questions definitely drop them in the chat we'll be on for a few more minutes um i i believe this this technology has blown everybody's mind in the chat according to what, <laughs> to what i'm seeing um Hangmaster says, "Integrate that into Serato Sampler, and it's game over." <laughs> yeah, that that would be dope. That would be super dope. We um, are working on DJ integration, so really something nice. next year. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I guess I mean I can see DJs using this like every day. Um, and thank you for the discount code. Shout out to everybody. Uh, make sure you use that. Take fifty to get fifty percent off. 
Um, so wow. So I guess what's what's next? What's on the horizon for for Audio Shake? I know you mentioned a, a couple things that you all are working on, such as you know getting those, the vocal splits and things like that. Like, what else are you guys working on? Yeah. So for us, there's sort of two things that are constant. One is that we're always looking to improve stem quality. Okay. So for example, we're really focused on drums right now. We think we can make them snappier. Um, so that's like a big goal between now and the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're also always interested in STEM breadth. So that's where, you know, we're working on multivocal separation or different kinds of instruments that we'll be separating next year. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then I think beyond that, we're working on different, different things that will make it easier for people to build music experiences off on top of STEMs. So, okay. for example, if you want to do anything in like VR or anything immersive, um, mm -hmm. any of you who are on the call that have done like a Dolby Atmos mix, something surround sound, you need to be able to place the sound objects in different perceptual fields. It's the same way with the so-called metaverse mm -hmm. uh, and immersive audio, because you want that sound to sound like the real world, right? Where we don't have sound just coming in just right here. It's coming everywhere. True. Um, and so we, we're building different tools that make it easy for if you are a VR company, for example, um, to be able to use stems within your app or platform. Wow. Or if you're a social media company, you know, one thing I loved that we did that I would love to see on social media, mm -hmm. um, we did a project with Green Day okay, where we had lost the masters to uh, their 91 album, Kerplunk. And I think one of the most famous songs from that album is um, 2000 Light Years Away. Yeah. So they used Audio Shake to create the stems for 2000 light years away. They uploaded that audio minus the guitar to TikTok and released it on TikTok so that all of their, cause they have a ton of guitar playing fans. And that way all their guitar playing fans could play along with the band, which is sort of like the dream, right? When you're learning instruments, like yeah. you're sitting on my bed trying to pick out bass lines or imagining myself playing bass along with the band. And yes. they made it possible for you to play with Green Day basically like along. And so, like, I just think that'd be incredible if you were on social or in some education app and you could solo an instrument or, um, or, or, or like mute the rest of whatever it would be, right. That you could yeah. do these kinds of that from a music education perspective would be so valuable. The, huge. Because like when I was learning how to play keys, I had to play over the keyboard player that was playing on the song. Right. So like to be able to mute that, like learn it, but then be able to mute the keys to make sure you actually, you actually sound good. And, right. Or even with, with singing, like the lead vocal that, yeah, that's, that's huge. That would be super huge. Um, yeah. So we got, we got another one from Billy he says, Jessica, what do you think about TikTok, TikTok's new stem drop feature? Um, <clears throat> so I think it's, so, well, for, I should say for those who don't know, TikTok announced, um, that they're doing something where they're going to be releasing uh, Max Martin's songs or some of the songs or one of the songs as stems so that their fans, like fans can remix it. And I think there's a stem player that Samsung is building to make it easy for people to play with that. Okay. Um, and they also said that they would make it possible for artists to upload their stems so that their fans could do it too. Okay. Um, I generally think all things with stems are cool. Like when Kanye, uh, I will, I will say the one good thing about Kanye that has been said this week and what is otherwise probably not a very good week or month for Kanye. <laughs> for Kanye like exactly. I think the Donda, you know, the Donda player, right? Yeah. Yep. Not, it's not totally my thing in the sense of, you know, but it's this, you know, thing that allows you to split stems. Um, like that's cool. I think it all is. things that make music more accessible to people and that bring more people into music creation and music appreciation are, it's a step forward. And so yeah. I think the TikTok thing is pretty awesome. I think that um, the difficulty is that everyone on this call, you all like, you all make music, you know how to make music, yeah. um, you know how to bounce stems. And still I can tell from the chat, from the fact that we're having this conversation, like, you don't like doing it either. So you all are like in the business of music and 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 still find this painful. So imagine if I wanted to upload my own stems to this TikTok stem drop thing, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? I'm going to take my DAW. I'm going to spend 30 minutes bouncing those stems 
or something that may never make me any money that maybe no one will ever see. Yeah. I'm going to take 30 minutes bouncing those stems. And then I'm going to do what? Like send them via Dropbox to my phone. Then I'm going to download them on my phone. Then I'm going to upload them to TikTok into a player that potentially looks a lot like a mobile DAW, which means it's probably still not super accessible for a normal person to work with. Yeah. Like that just feels like a lot of steps. It is. Um, and that's what I would worry about. I think eventually, but I think it's a great first step. And eventually what will happen is there will just be a button that you'll push on TikTok that will split things out. And artists who don't want that, they'll have a way to say, don't do this to my music. And artists who do want it will be able to. So I, I, I generally like very positive on the whole thing. I think it's very cool. Yeah, indeed. I, I agree. And um, yeah, the device the that Kanye created, like I think that's super creative because it allows people to enjoy the music and listen to it however they want and like it, you can listen to it in a different way like every time you listen to it like listen through the album with no drums or just acapella and like I, I think that's really cool for sure um hangmaster wants to know is there an affiliate program for audio shake there should be <laughs> there should be <laughs> i haven't, we haven't we, you know we're a pretty small team so we haven't yeah. created anything like that now but um okay but i'm very happy if it's useful to your followers and stuff, um, I'm very happy to give out discount codes that you can share that have your name and like that, that stuff is very quick and easy for us to create. And okay. um, certainly happy to collect um, people's interests such that when we do do something like that, we could yeah. come back. To but yeah, immediately today, we don't we don't have that. OK, cool. Yeah, it sounds like they're like they're ready to spread the word like a wildfire. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, this this has been dope. And honestly, it's been reassuring for me <clears throat> because now I realize that these huge artists are just as irresponsible <laughs> with their sessions as as independent artists. Like they're losing stuff just like we're losing stuff. They have hard drives crashing just like we do. So that's kind of reassuring. We're not the only ones. Oh, no, 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 no. I could tell. Obviously, I can't say some of the names, but if I think of the stems that we've created for Dolby Atmos mixes, yeah. um, some of them are some of the biggest acts out there wow. right now. Um, particularly, I would say in hip hop, um, stem passing on stems seems to be a challenge um, more so than in some other genres. Yeah, and then in EDM, it's a different challenge, which is like that. And I think this also happens in hip hop. Um, some of the producers are like. That, that's my secret sauce. I'm not going to pass that on. <laughs> yeah. Things get real, real tricky when you start asking people for like individual files and stuff. And I mean, I've seen, I've been in a studio, I've been in sessions where <clears throat> like the label would be asking for stems and the producer's like, no, they have, I haven't gotten paid yet. You're not getting them. Um, so yeah. And then, yeah. And then they still haven't gotten paid. So stem still hasn't gotten released. Um, and then there's situations where a lot of people are just recording the two tracks and not, you know, getting everything, you know, um, tracked out. So, yeah, there's a there's a lot, a lot of that for sure. Um, Hangmaster says, don't bring up hard drives crashing anymore today. <laughs> Triggered my PTSD. I understand, man. I, I understand. Uh, so that's awesome. Listen, Jessica, I'm not going to hold you. This was super insightful, um, super cool to, to to see it in in the works and to just hear about all the, the dope stuff you guys are working on at Audio Shake. Um, I guess let the people know where they can find out more about you, more about Audio Shake. Um, I know we mentioned it before, but just mention it again where they can um, take advantage of, of these services and um, whatever else you all have going on. Yeah, sure. So to use it, you go to indie.audioshake.ai. Um, and again, if you use take 50, um, that will give you 50% off the first order. Um, and, uh, and, and feel free, you can always email us uh, info at audioshake.ai. The, the link's also on the website. Um, if you have a project that has, for example, multivocal separation or something like that, we can try and help you out directly over email. Um, and, and yeah, if you are ever interested in discount code or spreading the word, you know, we, um, one challenge we had when we created this, which I'll just say to end it was we wanted to create something that would help us serve indie labels. Um, but we also really wanted to make it accessible to indie artists. So our pricing was kind of aligned with there. 
Mm-hmm. And I always, I actually feel like we're a little expensive on the producer side because you guys work with so many files and these are also not files that you're going to keep forever and ever necessarily, right? You might be working with them on behalf of an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, so always down to give extra discounts to producers and stuff. We want the tool to be accessible to you. Um, so if you email us in, we can always give you, you know, some extra discounts too. Um, but uh, yeah, and then we're at Audio Shake AI across all of the platforms. And the final thing I'll say actually is if um, you ever do create something uh, on Audio Shake, um, we're very happy to help promote your work and your music on our socials as well. Nice. So. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jessica. This was dope. Thank you for the discount codes and um, and just helping helping the community, you know, be able to uh, be able to avoid heart attacks, um, avoid uh, not getting paid for syncs because you, you guys have this awesome technology. So thank you again. Shout out to everybody in the stream. Make sure you guys like, share and subscribe and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Thanks.